All right, aloha, free radicals of all shapes, sizes, colors, denominations, and orientations. Welcome back. I'm Dave, at least for now. Well, here's the thing. I'll continue to be Dave, <laughs> but I'm not sure this channel is going to be around very long based on what I've been hearing. Uh, but I say aloha. The reason I say this channel might not be around is because channels have been randomly deleted uh, and they continue to be deleted for no reason. And when I say no reason, I literally mean no reason. Um, look, folks, this is a highway. The, the way I look at this, this is a highway. And if I can't drive on this highway, we need to build more roads. Right? Um, later on today, I'm going to be talking with somebody from Rockfin. And I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, apparently there's a process involved. I'm not sure what they're looking for out of me. I can tell you my heart is in doing this because I love this woman here. I do. I don't know her, but I love her. And um, she could be eh, she could be one of the greatest presidents we've ever had. But we're not going to know unless we all do our part in supporting Tulsi Gabbard, which... Um, I'm reminded to tell you if you haven't donated yet to Tulsi Gabbard's campaign. Say by chance the algorithm led you to me, okay, instead of Kyle Kalinske or somebody who's really good at this. But and you watch me, you say, well, what can I do? Give a dollar on your credit card or debit card to Tulsi Gabbard. Give a buck. She needs donations. We're getting her into the December debate. We're going to do it. Because this isn't, I hate to use the word movement because Trump liked to use that a lot. And after a while, when I heard movement, I thought, oh, it's a bowel movement. That's what it is. <laughs> I know that's, I'm a little warped. That's the way I am. That's why my kids love me so much. And my wife, she thinks I'm funny. Um, but seriously, folks, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, this is, this is different. This, <laughs> I don't, look. I'm over the neo progs. I'm over the TYT types. It's like they've got their money. So here's the thing. If you're paying me to say crap, I'm going to keep saying the crap because I'm getting paid to say the crap. Because I'm going to, you know how I'm going to justify that? I'm going to say, well, you know, I'm supporting my wife and kids. I may disagree a little bit on the inside, but hey, I agree enough on the surface to just go along with what they're saying. This is what happens in media. These people don't care about who the president is. They don't. They really don't. They're glad Trump is the president because Trump is the greatest pinata the media has ever had. Whereas Tulsi Gabbard would be somebody who might actually stop the carnage. You know why she might stop the carnage? Because she's real. Conservatives don't like a lot of her progressive ideas. And conservatives say this a lot. They'll say... Well, I don't agree with her. She's probably a socialist, which I say, please stop using that word. The left and the right have no idea what they're saying. Both, hey, I'm going to say this again. Both the left and the right have no idea what they're saying when they say socialism. All these congressional candidates, I'm a democratic socialist. No, you're not. You're a capitalist who wants to control some levels of the economy, some aspects of the economy. And that's fair. FDR didn't run around and say, I'm a socialist. It doesn't work. When you say socialist, you're not too far away from communist. And by the way, if you're in the Green Party and you're saying, guess what I got? I got the endorsement of the Socialist Party USA. Yeah, that's going to get you elected. That's going to get you a plurality of votes in a general. You moron. <laughs> Look. If you want to sit here and argue with me about the word and say, Dave, people need to be educated on the benefits of socialism. You know what the people need? They need the socialism. And if it's socialism, they need it. But what I see is they need a specific issue taken care of. All right? Because our economy isn't going to change all that much. Wall Street, you're going to shut down. Are you shutting down Wall Street? No, you're trying to skim a little bit of money off of Wall Street. That's what you're trying to do, which isn't really socialism. It's a tax. 
It's a tax, okay? So call it what it is. And stop throwing the S word at people. All right, anyway, both the left and the right agree to some degree about Tulsi Gabbard and her appeal. What appeals to people about Tulsi Gabbard? She's not a lunatic. I've said this a hundred times. One of the great things about Tulsi Gabbard is she's not screeching. She's not shouting. She's not pretending to speak in another dialect to try to appeal to a certain group of people. You know why she doesn't do that? Because she doesn't care. She, she really doesn't care. She wants to be herself. And people like her for who she is. By the way, in this video, great introduction by Kim Iverson, who is one of my favorite uh, people in media right now. She is that good. She is that good of um, an up-and-coming media star. And good for her uh, for introducing Tulsi. I guess Tulsi probably asked Kim to do this, and um, Kim was very classy. And this is another thing. Conservatives like to see class. They don't like to see people dressed up like they're about to toss a Molotov cocktail somewhere. All right? And constantly you're going to see people on the right using footage of crap like that and not footage like this over here, wherever you could. Now, I'm pointing the wrong direction. All right? Kim Iverson and Tulsi Gabbard, two very strong women up on the stage, by the way. And nobody is really concerned about identity politics, but it just so happens you've got one strong woman introducing another strong woman. We are in possibly the most important election of our lifetime. We had a charlatan come through and convince people that he was the way. The reason people went for Trump is because Trump said stuff that was different from what the establishment says. Now, Trump, once he got in there, was pretty much neutered by the establishment. And Donald Trump wasn't equipped to be the president of the United States. At best, he was a spokesperson. Some would say he's a game show host, real estate mogul. All of those things are true. And people would say, well, we needed an outsider. Well, <laughs> We didn't need an outsider who didn't know what he was talking about. And, of course, he's coached, he's got speechwriters, yada, yada, yada. I used to like Trump at the beginning. I realized that Trump, he probably didn't even want to be president. We've got an opportunity now to fix the mess and literally do a 180 on it. And we find someone who's genuine and who shows empathy and understands what we're up against and who wants to unite the country and that's the point of this whole video is that there are some in this country that don't want to be united and you could say well there's a grievance culture out there and so forth i've heard kyle kalinsky talk about this and say that the right kind of overplays that hand about the grievance culture, and they do the same thing. They have their own grievances. Yeah, everybody's got a grievance. Even if you could turn the volume level down on the grievance just a little, just a tiny little bit from an 11, you know, like the spinal tap, if it could come down from 11 to maybe 8, then you could hear one another speaking. It would still be loud, it would still be messy, but you could have conversations. Somebody would come up to you and say, you know, I know you voted for Tulsi Gabbard. And I'll say, yes, I don't agree with her on this whole Medicare for all or Medicare choice thing, because I think it's socialism. You could say, really? Okay, let's have a chat. Do you like Social Security? Do you like Medicare? And then you go from there. And I'm not saying you're going to convince, there's no way in this country you're going to convince everybody to come over to your side. But see, when you turn the volume down on the hysteria, you turn it down enough, people are actually going to be able to hear you. And that's what this is all about here. This isn't about, you know, 
being, you know, I love it on Twitter because people are always trying to one up me. Oh yeah, I was in a, I was in an argument with somebody yesterday, and I said I don't think you should um not thank veterans. Well, I'm not thanking them because they knew what they were getting. No, no, they got tables set up at high schools all over the country. All right, what do you want to do with your life, Junior? Oh no, man. Well, how about the military? This is what we pay you. These are the benefits you get. You get to see the world. We take you everywhere, and we'll take care of you pretty much for the rest of your life, supposedly. And they don't, but at 18 years old, you hear that message, and you're like, oh, I don't know, sign me up, because I have no future. Either that, or I work at Walmart, and I get paid minimum wage. You see how that works? So, <laughs> veterans, you don't demean veterans. 22 veterans are killing themselves every day. And I don't have patience for people like that in my life anymore. I really don't. So I argue a little bit on Twitter and then block, delete, block, delete, whatever I got to do. All right, look, I am not, I don't, I mean, I'm not a sage. I don't have all the answers to everybody's questions. I have opinions and I let them know. And you can correct me. People correct me all the time. You know, I've been talking a lot about how the generals kind of run the show. The generals apparently don't run the show. You know who runs the show? The people above the generals. They have a policy. They have things that they say and believe in. And they transmit that to the generals. And they say, you guys go ahead and pull this off. And the generals are like tacticians. Some of them, I think, do kind of want to go along with it. Because militarism, it gets in your blood. And you want to go out there and execute your mission. And it's going to take every ounce of energy to change that culture. We got video games. We got television shows almost every night on every major television network you scan. It's either a cop show, a military show, a drama that's got some kind of militaristic bent to it, whatever. Okay, the military runs the show. From an early age. All I know is Tulsi Gabbard is different. She's different. And we need to keep going. And we will. Look, here's another portion of this video that's important. And this isn't a knock on Bernie Sanders, folks. All right? I, I, I got to be careful. Because someday I may have to vote for Bernie Sanders for president. And I will. I've said that numerous times. Tulsi Gabbard is a better candidate than Bernie Sanders is. Let's let's just be honest. I know <laughs> you got Kyle Kalinske, you got a whole bunch of people out there doing videos about how old Bernie is, and that's that's a non-starter for them, and how the heart attack doesn't mean anything, and it's just it it technically doesn't, but it did with Hillary Clinton. I had serious health concerns about Hillary Clinton. Of course, I had more concerns about her policy. But when somebody is pushing her into a van as she's collapsing, and then the van, you know, the door shuts and she drives away, I don't know if that's somebody you want to be your president. And look, Tulsi Gabbard is extraordinarily healthy. All right, her workout routine, and I've mentioned this three or four times now, I'm jealous, other people are jealous, and they should be. She is fit to be commander-in-chief. President is 24 hours a day. You sleep a little bit, but it's 24 hours a day. I would prefer Tulsi over Bernie. Tulsi's foreign policy, better than Bernie Sanders' foreign policy. It's a fact. Tulsi Gabbard's domestic policy is equal to Bernie Sanders' domestic policy. Tulsi Gabbard, by the way, on domestic policy, she'll get a bigger audience than Bernie Sanders will on some of the things that she proposes because she's listening. She's not just listening for Democratic primary voters, which are important because she's got to win the primary. And the primary voters have to understand that there's a general election coming up. So guess what? Some of her policies are geared toward everybody. Skeptics. People on the right are going to say, nope, that's socialism. Eh. Non-starter. She said the S word. Notice how Tulsi Gabbard doesn't say the S word. She knows. Polarization. 
We are already polarized, Bernie people. She is a less polarizing candidate than Bernie Sanders. Oh, well, look at all the guilt by association. Please, please, don't even. It's not even worth talking about. Um, there are plenty of people who are, shall we say, um, short-circuited some way, who support somebody who you probably like. Whether it's Bernie, Tulsi, or someone else. Jill Stein. The bottom line, folks, is we've got work to do. And the work we're doing promoting Tulsi Gabbard is the most important work we can do. Because I believe Tulsi Gabbard is a better candidate than Bernie Sanders. And I've said this over and over again. And I think her background equips her to unite the country. Bernie, the perception of Bernie, and look, maybe Bernie as president would be different. I think he would be. Perception of Bernie is he's way over on the left. And even though he's got a lot of populism, the people who support him want to ram all of that leftism down your throat in a way which is not very tasty. Tulsi Gabbard says, we're all Americans. These are my ideas. Hear me out. Give me a stage. Give me a platform. And we'll work this through together. That's different from you're deplorable or I'm not going to go on Fox News. You know what I'm saying? We've got to come together. And the only way she's going to win is if people from different coalitions coalesce. So anyway, um, this town hall was amazing. Um, it shows the spirit of Tulsi and her supporters. Um, it shows that independent commentators like Kim Iverson, who introduced Tulsi Gabbard, who is probably an unknown to the mainstream media folks. It's us. We're doing this. Just think of that. We're doing this. We're driving this narrative of independent politics. It's democracy, people. It works. But we've got to push harder, and we've got to be very determined. By the way, as I wrap this video up, as I said um, a couple of times, there are forces out there that are shutting down YouTube content, just randomly shutting it down. The forces are, of course, um, people at YouTube, apparently, because they run the platform. And the more momentum Tulsi Gabbard gains, the more likely you won't be seeing me on this platform. I mean, I'm even worried about my music channel. I don't know why, but I'm worried about everything. Because when you see someone randomly getting shut down after putting all this effort into doing a channel, somebody says, you're fired. You're not working for us anymore. And they don't give you a reason. By the way, Bernie, I'll give Bernie credit. I'm sure Tulsi agrees on this. There needs to be something called workplace democracy. Um, <laughs> workplaces don't need to be dictatorships, but currently they are. Isn't that interesting? So again, if you can support me, and look, I'll go somewhere else if I can't do these videos, and your support will mean even more because there probably, there probably won't be any monetization, at least... Um, in the short term. So I ask you to consider giving like, I don't know, buck a month, two bucks a month over on Patreon, or just anything on PayPal, one-time donation. Somebody gave me a dollar yesterday. If everybody who watched this video gave a dollar to um, PayPal, um, I'd be in pretty good shape. So in any event, um, Tulsi Gabbard, there she is, best candidate in my lifetime. Aloha from sunny Florida. We'll see you soon.